No, no more music than a tart. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I don't like it when you do it like that. Uh, <laughs> welcome. We have been gone for a long time and happy PCness holidays to everybody from all around the world watching. Um, we're excited. We took a few weeks off just to do some other stuff. And uh, we're excited to be back with myself, Joss, and my co-host here, Dimitar. Yeah. Even if you don't see me, I'm here. I see you. Because Josh is... No, I don't. No, people I do. don't see me. I see you. <laughs> you can see both of us. There you go. Okay. Oh, no, it's you are in response to people saying these things were not... Uh, the quality was not high enough. We're trying something new today. So please do tell us if you're able to see things better. I'm hoping that you will be able to. It seems like it so far. Um, cool. Anyway, we are going to start with the little Flutterflow Christmas present that everybody got, which I've only just been told is a thing. Like apparently there's Spotify wrapped is a thing, which I don't use Spotify, but apparently it's a viral trend or whatever. And so Flutterflow it is. did Flutterflow wrapped and explain what is Flutterflow wrapped. It has some cool stuff. Yeah, Flutterflow wrapped, it's your ear wrapped, uh, what you did actually in Flutterflow. Uh, which is another thing to know that Flutterflow is constantly look at look at what you're doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that, are you doing something you shouldn't be doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so just you know that uh, yeah, they do watch you. And uh, I misclicked my yeah, you did uh, <laughs> shared. Tab, but what I wanted to share first is that yeah, when you go to your app.flutterflow.io, uh, this is the uh, the box, the magical box or the present box that you have to click in order to see your Flutterflow wrapper wrapped. So Flutterflow wrapped 2022. Probably the next year we will have another wrapper. So keep that in mind. So next time you are actually doing something in Flutterflow, just leave the Flutterflow open. So I don't get... think it works like that, though. <laughs> it, it, it times out, I asked. <laughs> they, it, it only counts active, like, if you're moving your mouse. It's like if you're, when you're doing, you know, there are, like, apps for when you're remote working from home or something, if you need your boss to think you're constantly working, that, like, move your mouse at random. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, you need one of those if you want to really, like, you know, dominate the leaderboard. Yeah. Okay. So they're constantly watching you, even if you're not there. They just, they just say, "Okay, you're not there." So, don't. don't <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm not. You should share my face, probably, Josh, again. Oh, sorry. I have to keep changing it. Apparently, sorry. I can see your face, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, it's just you nice. again. <laughs> and this is actually. It's not from the beginning. Beginning because there there is a cool uh, audio. Uh, which apparently stops when you uh, wait <laughs> for goodness. five minutes or something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is mine. So let's share first mine, and then Josh will uh, break uh, for the flow with uh, his. Uh, so here are my top three wishes. I think this is super normal. Uh, actually, bottom it's not very normal, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot of buttons. Reason. I don't know. Mine were different. I have to say, I think mine are yeah. different. So colon, of course, it should be on top three. And uh, text, I think, top three as well. But the third one, maybe it's uh, is different for every user, I think. And then <clears throat> the second screen is uh, that I added one to more than 1,000 widgets, and I deleted 407. So that's a good thing that I have left with 5,000 widgets. <laughs> you have some widgets left over. I think <laughs> exactly. the ratio is kind of interesting. I, I've seen a lot of people who have shared theirs. And it's kind of interesting the ratio of whether deletions to, um, which I guess is why they. My included. ratio is two to one, isn't it? Uh, no, you deleted four hundred seven, so you're de you're keeping six hundred, so it's fifty three to two, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, you're right. But uh, yeah, at the end of the, it, it will be it will be weird if your added ones are less <laughs> than the deleted ones, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I don't think this is possible, right? No, you, can, you need you can. to add something to order to delete. Now, what would be interesting is who got a thought like zero deleted, like just perfection, just <laughs> never, never made a mistake. <laughs> Maybe if we have five widgets and zero deletes, then yeah. Uh, all right, next page. Next page, you'll be busy, busy this year. 
you spent Whoa! seven more than seven thousand minutes, which is, is not. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I have to calculate this, isn't it? I did it for mine, but I don't have the calculator off the top of my head. Uh, so I should build let's... a little widget so we can calculate how many days I. I find well, maybe we can ask. Maybe we can ask the AI. So the AI <laughs> can tell us. Or I'll just ask Google. What is it? Seven thousand. Oh, yeah. uh, Seven thousand eighty-three. 7,083 divided by 60 divided by 24. There are 118 days, it says. No, 4.9 days. 4.9 days. Why it says 118 Where days? Say that? And the AI. Because the AI is not a human. <laughs> it doesn't have. But surely 7,000 minutes, there are 60 minutes in an hour and then 24 hours in a day. So you did five days on Flutterflow, basically. Oh, okay. That yeah, sounds five days. Minutes. <laughs> five days for the year. It's not that much, to be honest. Uh, but I most of the time that I spent is actually I spent I think double the time uh, or ter, three times the server. time during my server and doing my backend call because I use Apicos. So I have to prepare my Apicos, and then I the Flutterflow. This is actually it's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing, because uh, uh, the less time you spend, this is the whole idea, isn't it? The less time you spend in Flutterflow, the better. Exactly. That's because, that's a good point. Maybe because, the real yeah. winners are the people who <laughs> who don't uh, do anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, because in the end of the day, that's why that's why I'm using Flutterflow to actually spend less time building my app and more time focusing on actually the idea and getting the idea done. So exactly. how do I get it? This done? is actually true. This is actually true. This is the difference between a developer versus me is that uh, <laughs> the developer thinks first and then programs once and gets it right the first time. Joss points and clicks at random and then <laughs> something happens. <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah. You in the and top 1%. Here it says I'm the top one percent, which is uh, strange for me because seven thousand is not that much in the end of the day. Like you said, it's four days or five days. How many days? Five days. So four point nine. Five days. So five days. There five are, by days. the way, to pump up Flutterflow, there are now over three hundred thousand people using yeah. Flutterflow. So to be in the top one percent of that is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and it's amazingly, I was surprised. It is. Uh, there are more people in the EU than in. Europe than in America, which surprised me. I think the most of them were in uh, Asia, isn't it? But that's normal. Yeah, everything's more. Yeah. yeah. There were also loads in like Africa and it just shows yeah. you that really, uh, apart from Antarctica, Flutterflow is going global. Yeah. And you're an innovator. Yeah. I don't know how. I think they they do they do this uh, randomly. That's what I, I will so. say. Uh, but it says that I created 11 market items in the marketplace. So probably that's why uh, I'm innovator. I was. So it's no, I don't think it's at random. I think it's definitely chosen by there's some if else logic there. Probably. I don't think this is done at random. I think it's they assign you something based on, yeah. So you probably, if you did some marketplace, item, like I did one marketplace item, I didn't get called an innovator. Yeah. So that's people. And people will ask now, where are your 11 item marketplace items? Oh, that's true. Oh, now I get your comment from before. <laughs> Don't ask They're me. On the Flexperts. You have to subscribe <laughs> at flexperts.dev to get Jimitar's marketplace items. Yeah, that's true, actually. That's true. <laughs> They're all there. <laughs> that's true. Uh, and then awesome. I think this is the last one, isn't it? Yes, this is the last page. Okay, so now we can share time. it. And if you share it, uh, we actually, on the Flexperts Dev uh, Twitter account, we have we shared ours and... Uh, if you reply, we will pick someone tomorrow at random, and we will give you a free credit to spend on Flexperts to oh, yeah, let's improve your app. Um, so just share this little Twitter thing uh, in the yeah. reply. Find us Flexpert, at Flexperts Dev on Twitter, and just reply with your thing, and we will pick one at random tomorrow uh, for a free hour of essentially asking whatever you want about Flutterflow. Cool. Let's show that know. real quickly. That's uh -huh. this one. Yeah, if you go find that while I find my um, my Flutterflow rep, it really cut off my face weirdly. But yeah, find that, reply to that, and 
you can win. Even if you didn't have, even if you only did one minute on Flutter Flow, you can still win. Um, cool. I will go quickly, a little bit quicker through my, uh, now you get the general idea of it. Uh, because, and then we'll get to the, because there's a lot of updates, obviously, we've been gone a yep. few weeks. So, uh, da, da, da. so here's my Flutter Flow wrapped. I build 3,524 containers. Wow. 1,935 rows and 123 columns. Okay, no I think buttons. this is the probably most the most uh, common one uh, because the container it's maybe the text or container. I will if I pay my money, mm -hmm. I will say row, colon, and then text or container. As you see, I am so. What's my ratio? Ten thousand to so six to. It's a little bit. I delete more stuff than uh, <laughs> than you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your ratio it's more than what's like. Yeah, 10, 000, 10, 11, 000, It's yeah, really exactly. close. I spent seventy five thousand minutes. Uh, well, so, so, so you spent like ten times more than I spent, <laughs> right? <laughs> because I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> uh, uh, so, okay. how many days are that? Um, it is. Uh, I calculated out it's 24% of like my waking hours were spent on Flutterflow. Okay. 24%. Assuming I spent eight hours a day sleeping. Wow. 24%, 24%. Of every day. Wow. But when it's not that impressive. Like it's like it works out to be, I don't know, like two or three hours a day or something. No, but I but at the end of the day, you are the the user who spent the most time in Flutterflow from all the users around the world, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. I That's... think last time they told me I was number two. Oh, you're number two. <laughs> number okay. one. I was well, they said number one, one or two. There was maybe some number, other guy. maybe I, I, number one is the, the founder of uh, Flutterflow. I don't know. They, no, I, I assume they take themselves out. I really genuinely have no idea who number one is. Uh, but they said it like alternates that we're if back. If you are the number one, one, let us know. Okay, yeah, exactly. If you're number one, <laughs> reply to the third on Twitter and I can give you an hour of consulting. <laughs> uh, my personality type is a perfectionist because I made 7,000. I make almost one edit per minute. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, which is how many mistakes I make, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah. But edits, so again, share do you this. edits like edits of like text? It edits? means you do one, it means you make one action basically. So uh, yeah. you do something. Okay. Yeah. So you add something, you delete something, you do something. Yeah. Cool. So that's Flutter Flow Wrap. Share yours. Wins and done. It's exciting. We love that Flutterflow did it. And I love that they published the stats too. There are now 5,400 apps have been published to the App Store and Flutterflow, 300,000 users. I mean, those are some insane growth stats. Yeah. I'm Should really we show that them. as well? Or? Uh, I think let's just, that, that's pretty much, it's on YouTube. Um, okay. They can see it. I would say we just dive in to, because there's yeah. a lot to cover. Yeah. So cool. there are actually three updates. The one from 16 of December, the one, no, the one from the 8th of December. So the one from the 8th of December, the one from the 16th, and one from the 281. So let's, say, let's go for the most recent one. Most because recent? otherwise we'll never catch up, right? Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Because this is the old one, right? The uh, exciting one is mostly maybe super base. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it like that. So this is the first. So this is the middle one, right? No, this is the last one. This is the most recent one. Okay. Uh, so what is new? Um, I will read it. You will tell me. So the first thing they're talking about is the... Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to change my mind. Can we do the one with Superbase? I think that's important. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sure. Let's do that. Uh, so this is probably one of the biggest, most requested updates that Flutterflow has uh, ever had and has done now. Uh, Flutterflow now has integration with Superbase. What is Superbase? Superbase is not Firebase. <laughs> um, essentially, it is. But it's a base. It is a base. It is a base. So is Basecamp on Everest. Uh, <laughs> so Superbase is, if you want to pull up the website, you can show. Superbase yep. is a uh, freemium, open source in the same way that Firebase is free for a what has a free plan. Um, and it's open source. It's kind of a hosted database. The biggest, biggest difference is it is not a no SQL. It is a relational database like MySQL, MySQL. Uh, it based on Postgres. It has you know similar things that Firebase has, like kind of their own version of server-side functions, 
But the biggest thing is that if you were not using Plentiful or were worried that you're maybe you're just used to relational database models, you can now use Flutterflow with Superbase. And that is gonna be better for some apps. Um, as much as we all love Firebase, sometimes that model of relational databases just works better for things like banking apps for it. Also for me, the biggest thing here is about scalability, especially for something like maybe a social media app or something like that. Um, using Superbase has some huge advantages and we can do more in depth stuff if you guys want on that in another week. Yeah. But, but uh... yeah. But let's say that at the beginning of the first version of Superbase that the Flutterflow integrated, I think we don't have the out, right? So we don't have the out notification. So, no, I don't think so. Yeah, so notification is not working. So if you're looking for something to have notification and also uh, using Superbase, uh, Superbase, Superbase, then in this at the time of the recording of live streaming this video uh it's not there but let's hope that i think they will add it soon yeah i mean i think for for me at least i'm the i didn't actually even notice that because the, it's the last thing i have no problems with how firebase auth works it works yeah. for me at least fine uh what is of interest is being able to query data and use data in a different way so do you want to pull up flutterflow and then we'll quickly just go through can we just can be quickly up? go about the pricing as well because to be i actually honest, know about the pricing but, yeah, because um, because the, because uh, because it's an open source project, uh, I was thinking that the pricing will be better uh, for uh, Superbase than uh, Firebase. But uh, based on the community, because I didn't use the, I didn't use uh, I I use most of the time as I always say the Apicos, and yeah. I don't. If I use Firebase or Superbase, I didn't. I just use it for Superbase to just uh, set it up. I didn't use it for. So the thing is that what I want to say is that I didn't use it so heavily, so I can uh, reach the limit and actually pay for something. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, what community is saying about it is that the prices are almost similar. I'm not. I don't know if this is true, but at least what. I mean, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I don't know. From from what I'm looking at right now, the difference is that it's not usage-based pricing. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are scared about Firebase pricing because you obviously have your free tier. And then once you get over that, uh, it's very easy. You know, if your app goes viral, for instance, yep. you could end up waking up to a very big, you know, server bill or whatever, right? The difference yep. here with Superbase is you have flat fixed pricing. So yep. you have 25, and it seems like that's their maximum tier is $25 a month. That's obviously yep. really affordable, right? I don't yep. know how hard it is to break that. I mean, it seems like the biggest usage limit would essentially be 50 gigabytes bandwidth. I have no yep. idea. I can't put that in. Which context. is a lot, actually. Yeah. So I think you're essentially paying $25, which is yep. really insane. Yeah. It's that's pretty true. easy to break $25 on Firebase. So that's, that's one thing that is an immediate benefit. And um, according, just I wanted to check, according to my app, the one that I'm using and all the projects that I'm having, their broadband is 18 gigabytes. So there it's it's a lot. And those are like production apps. You've got a bookstore. Exactly. You've got, exactly. 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 So 50 gigabytes is a lot, to be honest. Yeah. So that's really cool. So if you're looking for, if you're worried about Firebase pricing, definitely check out Superbase. Um, I always say worrying about pricing is a good problem to have. In terms of how you actually set it up, um, you need to go into the Flutterflow settings and then you'll need to enter in, it's really quick and easy, a few simple uh, like API key, uh, stuff, that your endpoint URL, a uh, few things you can get, there are links on that. Um, and then from that point on, again, we can do more on this. I don't want to spend the whole time talking about Superbase, but it is a pretty major upgrade. But oh, so we are not showing how you can set it up. If you want to, I don't have it set up. So if yeah, I think I think it's uh, uh, forward, but yeah, I don't know. We can show it if you want. So I don't know. Yeah, if you have you got your setup? Uh, I just did. Like, so I think it'd be I, interesting to show the queries, like how the queries work and stuff. Yeah, sure. Let's let's try that. I I mean yeah. I haven't I haven't tried it, but uh, we can try it. You so retitled this ep people. episode the Superbase episode. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. But to be honest, this think... is the biggest. Uh, so yeah, here's, uh, if you want to quickly screenshot this and get Dimitar's private key, um, yeah. that's his private key. Uh, Which I will have to <laughs> uh, So if you, go, if you go to Flutterflow, you should be able to see Superbase here, isn't it? Uh, 
uh, to it's the bottom one. under integrations, like where Mux is. Yeah. So, so you yeah. just turn it on. I mean, the integration could not be much more simple than this, I don't think. Um, da -da -da -da. And then the second thing you're going to get is from your Superbase account, which is your API URL, essentially just like an endpoint. This is the location of your server. You and the API URL is coming from open your API or in your schema project. OK, yeah, so I, I need to create a project, isn't this, it? Yeah, you have to create a project. <laughs> yeah. OK, so, demo so let's create a Superbase project. <laughs> It says the password. It's uh, too weak, of course. I can't actually uh, so see your screen, so there you go. Yeah. So let's. Which region create... should you select? You should generally select the region that is closest to, not necessarily you, but to where your customers are. Um, that's something yeah, to like bear in mind. Northern Asia, for example. I mean, that's where all my customers are. <laughs> <laughs> of course. We actually have customers mostly, it's a little bit of an even spread. We have a lot from like Africa, a lot from US, and a lot from UK. Um, now, I, I, oh, there's your URL, I guess. It's that one. The third thing down. It's this one, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know why okay. I didn't find that. Okay, so let's. Because I already had a project set up, here. but I was, I was struggling to find that. And then get and some. Then... Maybe you need to create some schema. Yeah, but oh, the schema key, you mean? No, no, no. no like, the add on key. So the add on key, it's which one? Uh, oh, it's this one, isn't it? I guess it's that one, key. yeah. Okay, so let's put it over here. Let's put it like this. Okay. And now let's create a schema. Yeah, that's what I said. So. To create a schema, again, the way this works is similar, but slightly different, obviously, because it's relational. So what you have is the concept of tables um, in this world versus collections. Uh, but a table is roughly similar to a collection. Then you have, I don't know what they call them, records, um, rows or records, more like a spreadsheet. Uh, and then you have columns that are the equivalent of your field keys in Firebase. So the difference, obviously, again, with relational and non-relational, is that it is much more strict about everything you're needing to have every uh, uh, every entry. Whereas in Firebase, obviously, every document can technically be different. Although Flutterflow guides you towards, which is very helpful, the, the fact that you have the same things for every uh, document. But in reality, some documents can have some properties, some can have different properties within the same collection. So cool. We've got okay. a basic setup here. I have to create well, that's a good to administration can common. OK, what's that? There's some error I'm getting for some reason. Uh... It's literally just like the fire ship thing. What's the first thing you do? <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> OK, what type of server must be unique? OK. okay. They are unique. Isn't it? OK, yeah, let's delete know. this one. And then let's try again. Oh, table element must be unique. They are unique, isn't it? Maybe you need different default values. Uh, OK, let's try. Name. This is why we show you guys stuff. <laughs> okay, no, well, it says, oh, table element must be unique. Why they are not unique? Oh, maybe this one, isn't it? I have to enable the ID should be unique, which makes sense at the end of the day. No, it's not that. OK. Then what if you just quit out of this and go back to the? Let's try real quickly to create every field to be unique one. I guess this will not work, but no, it's not. It's not that. OK. OK. So Superbase is really cool. Uh, <laughs> what are we making? We are, hello, thank you for joining us, Evanesh. Right now we're showing the new Superbase integration um, for Flutterflow, and we're just trying to set up a basic table in Superbase, which neither Dimizar and I have really necessarily used before extensively. I've played around with it a little bit. And for some reason, it's not letting us create a table, which. Um, OK, so let's let's try with. Just the, the basic default setup. values. Yeah, exactly. So let's try with the basic setup and let's see, click save and see if that works. 
maybe I'm not uh, capable enough to yeah. create cones. It seems like it didn't fail, no? No, it's, it was... Oh, okay. There you go. I have no idea why that was. Can I yeah. add from here? Maybe I can add it from here. Cone name, for example, name. name yeah. And the type Do will be text. You have a lot. You have a lot more field types there, no? Oh, okay. Now it's more. Fire it is. Yeah. Now okay. It's so here would be a basic table. Now, if we go back to Flutterflow, what we should be able to do is pull in that database schema automatically, which is a really nice thing compared to having to set it up manually and then push it to Firebase. Yeah. And so there, you've got your schema. Yeah. Um, and now we can use really it, right? Yeah. So now we can go into a basic page, and just set up some query. Yeah, so let's try that. So it's super base. And then here I can have I can have a list view here. Right? Yeah. Or a common. Do what is the difference between the list view and the common? The difference between a list view and a column, a column, uh, a list view essentially by default has no um, maximum uh, height restrictions, and a column has maximum height that is to the as big as it can get essentially not letting okay. us create the table sounds great <laughs> okay uh we, we got there in the end uh, just sometimes it's gotta click more <laughs> uh cool so you'll see you now have this new option for a super base query uh which you can use in the same way as a firebase query but with obviously different options but it's going to be basically the same kind of layout and same operation in terms of choosing variables from the query. Um, how are the filters on that query? What did it let you filter by? Let's see. The thing that I see uh, is that you don't you don't have the generate from children's here, which you normally well you do never with... do. Um, you would have it if you did a uh, if you did your query on like a column, right? Then you would. Sorry, if you did your query well, I think on the a list container... view. Let's let's compare it because I okay. think. In the list view, uh, you should have it. Uh, you should have them as well. So if I wrap this widget inside colon, and this colon, if I what? Where's my colon? If I wrap you this wrap widget this inside the colon. colon, you should be able to, isn't it? No. You'd have to add the you have to add the column first. Okay. Let's then put the list view inside the column and set, and then it will set itself to expand it. So now you should be able to add a list view inside of that. That's actually an interesting point, guys. By the way, if you're getting crashing errors like that, uh, when you try to wrap something, it's not necessarily impossible. Just sometimes you need to do it the other way around. So you need to, as Dimitar has just done, adding a list view inside of a column. But when you, by default, try to wrap a list view in a column, it will crash. Um, OK, I didn't know that, to be honest. It's because when you add something to, like when you add uh, that list view to a uh, the column, I think by default it will have chosen, uh, it will have either set itself to expand it or it will have set itself to uh, shrink wrap children, which is a different default than when you added it by itself. It will have chosen different options that make it then crash when you try to wrap it. Wrap it okay. doesn't change the options. So yeah, you're right. Uh, we don't have the generate from children. So no. maybe the app you can't do when you do when you have a query on a column or a list view, you won't get the option to generate children. If you wanted to generate from children, you need to do the query on either the page or on a container above it, and then you'll have the ability to generate children from list. But if you if you're doing it from an app call, then I think you have it, isn't it? I don't know. You tell me. Probably, Mr. Appy Man. I think oh, so. Yeah, I'm ninety nine percent sure. Mr. Sandman. Send me your query. But let's not try this right now. OK, uh, so what are the filters for these super base queries? That's what I'm most interested in. OK, so add filters. And we have, for example, the name one and the relationship. I think they are the same, isn't it? So we have equal. No, so this is really interesting. The biggest difference one here is the contained by. OK. So. Uh, I think contained by means uh, less than or equal to, is, would be my gut instinct. Contained so by. So this is a big difference between a relational database and a non-relational database. Um, either that, or it means that contained by might relate to the relationships. 
So for those of you, by the way, I saw someone asking on the community the other day, uh, can you add uh, this type of filter for queries? And the answer is no, actually. The Flutterflow team can't do those. The types of queries that are available are essentially determined by the server. So either by Firebase for a Firebase query, or in this case, by Superbase for a Superbase query. Um, contained on Superbase, I'm going to do what all the developers do, which is secretly Google it. Um, uh, so a Superbase column contains every element in a value. Column contains every element in a value. So that yeah, so, I be... think, so I think this is if, if this, for example, have drawn, then it should be filtered by. So every every contains of the of the row that have the name of John, for example, it will take those, isn't it? No, or I think it means it has every one of those elements. So the name would have to have John and Jose and Dimitar. And Josh. Oh, sorry, Josh. I can't read. Yeah. Um, so it would have to have all three of those values, essentially. It's an exact match of a list. But that's impossible, isn't it? Um, how do you have how do you have or you mean contains by if you have if you, if your name it's a combined of those three names isn't i it? guess maybe oh, okay. column contains every element in the value only relevant okay maybe i've just read the wrong thing um fetch data i'm gonna look at it but the other ones are essentially the same thing right uh yeah. superbase. Superbase. i like how i'm looking on the superbase docs not on the flutterflow docs uh contained by uh, do, do, do. ah okay so this is contained by uh it's about a join no so it's if another value the reference object yeah i'm not sure use the new but it's probably how about, how about the new flutter flow documentation feature that they added last week uh where you can look up the documentation, no? Yeah, let me just. I don't uh, think they have. I don't think you want. Let me just try to run the test mode in the meanwhile. So in the meantime, so let's uh, see if this will actually show my data because. Okay. It should be interesting. And the other thing that I saw from today, actually, I don't know if this is new or not. You're the one that spent ten times more time in for the for the flow than me, is that. Before that, when you go to Navigate 2, uh, you will actually see all your pages uh, 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 sorted uh, by the list on the left. So when you have the pages on the left and the pages on the right is the same sorting. But right now I have the super base uh, or at least the order that you added them. And now I see that they change for some reason and they're uh, they are randomly showing all the page and for example, I just added Superbase, and now I have to find it in the middle of the list, which is something okay. new for me. I don't know if you saw that before. I haven't noticed that. Yeah, exactly. So this is something that normally it creates it at the bottom of the list. Or... Exactly, but this I saw it from today. So maybe this is okay. something new. Contained uh, by. All right, here we go. Superbase Flutter library contained by value. I have found the documentation page. Very, very slowly loading. Uh, so main exports car food machine with no explanation. Thank you. That's helpful. Uh, data await superbase from countries. Select name ID may contained by. Okay, I think it means in list then. It must be contained by value. So it means that, that if it's in that list, that's what it's saying. So it's okay. the same as list contains item. We can try that when it's uh, when it's actually loaded. The test mode when it's loaded, we can test. Okay. We can try that. So we have okay. two three minutes. Cool. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. In the meantime, that is pretty much. Uh, you, can you delete other actions to delete? I guess how to filter. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's. Oh, in that. this video. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Watch the Flutterflow video rather than ours <laughs> because they clearly know what they're doing, and we don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's the beauty of it. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Learn by doing. This is the real world experience here. Exactly. Uh, uh, so you're saying to delete something. 
Yeah, I'm guessing it will show up in the actions menu. It will be. We have insert, everywhere. update, and delete. So let's try the insert first. And then let's that will be insert create a new record, right? users. Yes, uh, a new row in this, is this very case. Cool. Uh, so let's, uh, this should be a unique, to be honest. So let's get it from variable. I and mean, let's use the random, random data. And yeah, this is actually a really cool entry. little trick for if you want to generate unique IDs for stuff, um, you can do it on the fly like this. One cool thing about uh, Superbase versus uh, what Dimitar said is to choose a random number between one and a thousand, I think. Um, yeah. What's kind of interesting is that the ID is a property in Superbase that you can access and set before, versus when you create a Firebase document, it is creating a random ID for you if you do it in Flutterflow, which means that you don't then know what it is in the next step of your action. Um, that's right. So that's kind of a nice little uh, difference, but as Dimitar said, they should always be unique, so that's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, so this should be the action of inserting. So insert, let's name it insert. And will Superbase, do you think, will it show those changes in real time? Yes, I, 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 I actually, there was, when I created the project, uh, there was an option uh, that you can check if uh, the changes will be implemented on, on, on real time or not. So I just click on that. So let's hope. OK, that... so that means essentially that in my Flutterflow app, in the same way as with Firebase, when a new item is created, it should refresh the page. Yeah. Why it's keep on adding me new columns? What am I doing wrong here? Because your Flutterflow app said you love columns. So let's, I have to <laughs> add it from here. Yeah, that's, yeah, of course. Have to add it from here. And then let's see if this is loaded. No, it's not loaded. OK, in the meantime, because we're still waiting to load the test mode, Let's create the lead one. So. And then there's actually one other thing I want to talk about, which is local state, um, because there's been some big changes there. Uh, In the local state? <clears throat> yeah. OK. Which are important. Uh, we don't even need that. We don't even need to go through the what's new in Flutterflow. We can just tell people what's new. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> return matching rows. Do we need that, actually, whenever to return the matching rows that are deleted? Oh, OK. So this is an option to actually return the row that you just deleted, which I don't know why you need it. But so you can delete it from other references, right? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Because does that happen automatically? So if I delete, a, obviously, in, in Firebase, yeah? Yeah. We really can do this entire episode about, <laughs> about Superbase. So uh, when we're, uh, you're the MySQL expert. So when I have a document reference, and yeah. you know, so I have a, a collection called groups, and in my groups I have a list of members, right? And the member is each a document reference, right? Yeah. And then one of those members, not in that document, but in the actual user document, gets deleted, right? The user deletes yeah. themselves, whatever. Yeah. The document yeah. reference in the group, that field will not automatically delete. No. But in a relational database, it should, right? Yeah. If you set it up the the right way. It should. Actually, well, I obviously. was talking about this one of the yeah. first live sessions that we had. I was talking about the MySQL uh, database, and I was talking about that, how you actually how you can actually set up this and mm -hmm. make it work. So when you because there's two things. One is to delete for your your example to delete the user, but the other example is to actually uh, update the user. So you can actually update the user and. User is not it's not uh, the right the right thing, but uh, I mean what I mean by that is Better that examples you, are transactions in a wallet maybe. If you if you for example update the ID of the user because right now the ID will be the connection between mm -hmm. like all of the columns or all of the uh, all of the columns in uh, Superbase. If you if you update the ID, it will you can set it up so I, it will automatically update. All the users' IDs that are in all the uh, tables. So mm -hmm. in all the, uh, do, do you call them tables? Yeah, yes. they're called tables. So, exactly. So all the tables. So this is something that uh, it was not. Uh, I don't think it's it's possible by out of the box by by using uh, only settings, right? Okay. In uh, Firestore. Uh, no, it's not. You need a cloud function. So yeah. here is our. It's a massive overflow. Here. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's loading. 
and probably it's loading more than it should be, isn't it? Uh, oh yeah, because yeah. it's loading. Yeah, yeah. I, the error comes from this uh, because I'm loading uh, the collection, which I don't have. Uh, okay, so probably this is. But uh, it didn't seem to be displaying any data for your superbase. Yeah, that's true. But let's see. Oh, the no, Okay, it says uh, stream properly, not properly set. In text, oh yeah, of course. But that's for your. To, that's for the other one. Because you have to delete it. Right? I mean, to be honest, that page didn't display anything. Is it because yeah. your test mode? Are you actually on this page? Yeah, you are. I'm on this page, you? but let's yeah. uh, see the ten second rule. Uh, probably. Second. Yeah, probably we should see. No it they right hate now. us when we're constantly mocking their ten <laughs> seconds. No, they're getting they better. Just want and honesty better. and transparency. <laughs> I wonder now that Flutterflow has 300 users, what is their server bill? No, 300, 300,000 300, users. users. What is their server bill each month? Yeah. It must be insane. That's a good question. No, it's not loading anything. Okay, let's try to insert. How do we okay. know if something is inserted? Let's go over here and see. Nothing is inserted. Okay, that's good. Well. That's good. Then let's try to delete something. So if I click delete, okay, it's not getting an error. And let's go over here. It's not deleting <laughs> anything. So the thing is that if I if you're getting it like this, and if you're wondering what is going on, why it's not deleting anything, I think that your best shot is to open the dev tools, which you can not see right now. But if I open the dev tools and I click this button, wait, sorry. And I click this button, insert or delete. It doesn't matter because both of them is, are not working. Uh, you can actually see uh, where is the error coming from. So in my case, the error is coming from that it says instance of uh, date time. So the error it's actually because I'm a de de the developer. Okay. And because Ooh, Josh... ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> and because jo and because Josh uh, hates developers. Uh, so, uh, so I can I can tell you that the error it's coming from uh, from here, because this uh, state time z I don't know if you can see it over here, but this is oh, state, but state this is due to a mismatch of the time zones basically. Exactly, exactly. So this is a mismatch of the timestamps. So this is the difference between NoSQL and relational database. Relational databases hate you. And basically, if you make one mistake, there is no forgiving. <laughs> they will just not add your data, not let you yeah. delete your data. Exactly, exactly. Them. Exactly, because in uh, because using uh, Firebase, you cannot do this, right? It will give you, it will give you an error, and it will say that uh, this is not possible. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not really sure. Uh, how to fix it. No, I, I know how to fix it, but I cannot copy paste uh, the value because to be honest, you need to actually take this value. But if I click to it, uh, it's conveniently showing me the calendar and I cannot copy Why don't you copy. just not set the created time? Maybe because you had a default value time. for this table, right? I think so. Yeah, That's you set the right. default value to be now, to be a JavaScript function. So why don't you Have just I? remove this? Have I? Yeah, you did let's when you set up the table. That's right. So let's okay. remove this one and let's. It doesn't. That doesn't again. explain why the delete wasn't working. Yeah, that's true. But let's let's get the insert. And if you are right, I should be able to to see the settings. So edit table, and here, yeah, you're you're right. This is wait a second. <laughs> this is what you're talking about. So, so this is another advantage, by the way, of uh, apart from the fact that it seems like nothing's working, but uh, there are advantages. <laughs> One of them is the ability to set default values, which obviously in Firebase you don't, you can't do without a cloud function, which you talked about using Roe and stuff like that. Um, so being able to set these default values can be really nice. It's just a big time saver for starters. Um, so hopefully this will, but. I'm not even going to try to get into timestamps because that's just a nightmare. Hold on, my little one. Yeah. So. So we okay. are refreshing. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. That's how we're almost mm -hmm. there. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Um. In the meantime, I could actually talk about uh, local state real quick. 
or is that a whole okay, other it's thing? It's not showing, and I don't get any errors. And why it's not? Oh, probably it's it's. Uh, I'm getting an error. It's a super base complete instance of super base. Uh, got super base object store in database super base identification. Okay, so let's try that. Insert. <clears throat> yeah, I'm getting another uh, error, which it says new role uh, violates role level security. So this is a security based error right now. Uh, okay, so this will be on these I tables. Just take away all the security. security. Take away all the security. Yeah, but I don't know where to. Ah, oh, unless you can do it. I don't know if you can do it in Flutterflow, but probably not. Uh, let's see. Like, you know how, because this is security. So this is the equivalent of Firestore rules. Yeah. Obviously, to control access to your database, people have to have certain permissions or rules. When you're using Superbase Auth, um, I mean, I'm, uh, I guess they have something similar. With Firestore, you have rules. With Superbase here, I don't know if it doesn't let you change anything, right? No. No. But probably so it should change it from setting. here. There must it? be a setting in Superbase somewhere for the table, no? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the problem is that that's why it's not deleting, I, I guess, because we don't have. Yeah, it just basically you don't have access to this table. Yeah. Is it because you did the wrong key? Because you did the public access key. Are you sure you're not supposed to do the other key, the admin key? Uh, I think no. So. It, uh, yeah, okay, let's try that. Uh, how because I... remember, your the, the key that you gave to Flutterflow, it's essentially the same way as you would put your Firebase admin key, right? But I think it will it will not take the it will not take the data. It will not it will not get take the schema. Is what I mean. If the key is wrong, isn't it? <coughs> no, well, the public. <coughs> <coughs> um. Okay, so maybe this one is access tokens. Yeah. So this is like an actual access token. So you won't be able. You have to create a new one. We don't. But, uh, yeah, but this is not. This is not the one that I added. The no, one you that added I a added is the project one. Which, uh, for some reason, I don't know how to get. Okay, all projects. Yeah. This is the project that I'm using. And ah, this probably it's this one. Project API. Ah. Policies. I saw API key. Could it be that? Okay. Let's go back. Where does connecting to your new uh, project? Yeah. Yes, I copied the uh, the one that I copied was. This key is safe to use. Uh, to in if I well, my head looks weird, but safe to use row level. If you have enabled row level security for your table and configured. You may also use this service key, which can be found here, to bypass. There we go. Bypass it. Who cares about security? OK. So uh, which one should I use? The service role. The service, this one. one. Yeah. This key has the ability to bypass. OK. Let's there we go. Let's Great. Open. Bypass the security. That's what we like. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So you're <laughs> saying that I should put... Enabled, enabled, <laughs> enabled, enabled, enabled. <laughs> So let's try that. Uh, get the schema. Yeah, okay. It, I think this should no, work. I guess now. we need 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds. We should definitely need 10 seconds. And that's why probably it's not, uh, we don't uh, see anything uh, showing, right? Because yeah. we don't have permissions to show or to delete. For the record, for anybody watching, uh, you should obviously not just <laughs> enable blindly security. Just full disclaimer, especially if you're, yeah. but when you're building, you can. It doesn't matter, but once you yeah. go into production mode, don't just accept. You know, make sure you go and change your security rules. Um, oh, it didn't time out. That's good. Expires in twelve minutes. Um, welcome to. So, the what you were talking about the local, local state, state Yeah. Uh, so, if you go back to your Flutterflow. Yeah. Oh, it just for first. Just even talking, but um. Uh, Wait, wait, so wait, wait. I find it out. Where is it? It's where are you going? No, it's here. Don't drunk drive. <laughs> drunk driving around Flutterflow. Okay, uh, this was my. Okay, just just just, just one second because right now it's working. Woo! We got there. You can see the names hours, like always, but we got there. And then when you click insert, we should insert a new value. We don't see it over here. I have I don't know why. But let's go over to the table. 
and let's see what is going on into the table where are the rows yes so you can see this is the one that i we just added if i I'm go not, back and insert question, one more it does not refresh in real time one more uh i should see it one more but let's let's refresh the page and i should see one more let's see if i'm right or not uh yeah so it's not even a refreshing like uh, firebase because when yeah. i because right now i'm clicking the button and then you're in superbase you're having to refresh yeah exactly and i have to refresh uh, and also to you would have to refresh the um essentially to so that query is essentially not in real time it's running once probably yeah. you can do it in real time but because as i said i saw an options that yeah. i saw an option that says uh, you can do it in real time so probably we didn't do something well i think the other part of that is this actually segues segues is transitions nicely into my thing about local state actually because this okay. might be uh, pair up nicely together. So there's two types of things in terms of whether something is showing in real time in your Flutterflow app. One of those is, is the server, is that query being run once or is it what's called listening for changes? Yeah. Normally yeah. when you have a Firestore query, it's listening for changes at all times, unless you have chosen the option single time query, which means yeah. when a new document is created, your, uh, it will show up in your app. Now, the reason it shows up in your app is because your what's called the widget tree has been rebuilt, right? As soon as that change, it listened for the change, it heard the change, and then it has actively gone and rebuilt the widget, the widget tree. Yep. So it has added an extra item. Now, yep. with local state, previously when you did update local state, things sometimes or sometimes did not get rebuilt, essentially. It was listening for the changes, but it didn't necessarily reflect on the page itself, especially if you were doing things like making a change inside of a component or inside of a custom widget, changes that happen inside of that would not necessarily immediately be shown outside of the, if you were changing a local state back. They've continued to make improvements to this in Flutterflow so that now that part works much better. The latest change, however, and if you've, if you've used uh, uh, update local state as a function in any one of your custom actions, you will have noticed this uh, warning you will get in the custom code editor that will tell you the new ways that update local state works. But if we just add it to a button here, so let's yep. say that, uh, or actually we could add it to the action chain even to like from Superbase after we, uh, or just let's do it simple. Let's just do a simple one here, yeah? So, yep. so when we tap this button, we want to update local state. And you will now see that you have, apart from the fact that, thank you, Flutterflow, you can set multiple local states at the same time. Yeah. Uh, that's the first thing, which is really cool. If we choose one of these like string values or something, uh, and then we set it to I don't know, some random value. Okay. Using the random generator, which is great for testing mode. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so we'll set it to some random name. Uh, so that every value. time we this means that every time we click the button we can see a change or should be able to see a change if we hook it up to a to a widget now what you're going to see there is this update type this is the new bit so there are now three options rebuild all pages rebuild current page or no rebuild what are these three things and when would you use them so the previously default option was to rebuild current page that's the previous behavior so the new behavior options are the first and the last one in this menu. Rebuild all pages and then no rebuild. Why would you want to rebuild all pages? You would want to rebuild all pages, especially if you have the option to pop back to another page. Previously, if you were just rebuilding the widget on your current page, a quickly. user editing the profile, and then they, you use the navigate back option or pop, it's actually got that page stored in a cache, essentially. And so what that means is that although the value has been updated in your database, it's updated in the page you're on on the new page. When you go back to page A, the original page, it's not going to reflect there. It will still show their old value. If you did a rebuild all, it will rebuild those widgets. In general, you probably want to stick to the default the way it used to be, which is to rebuild current pages. The reason is that there's no reason to rebuild all of those pages unnecessarily. 
if nothing changed. It's just unnecessary performance lag on your app. The third option there is to update silently. Update silently is the librarian option here. The reason you would want to do this is if you essentially don't need to change anything in what's displaying in your uh, in your the current page you're looking at. This is important for things, especially like expandable widgets and stuff like that, widgets that have initial default values. Sometimes if you rebuild them, you will get a visual uh, glitch essentially. So uh, every expandable widget has an option. It can be it can start open or closed. Yeah, and yeah. If a user is navigating on your page, they can open multiple of those expandable widgets. The problem is if you then change a local state value and rebuild everything, all of those expandables are going to go back to their state, which is going to look really weird for your user. It's not what they're expecting. They just click the button, and it seems like a bug to them, basically. Kind of is, yeah. because you should have done it silently. Uh, if you didn't need to, uh, if you didn't actually need to change that value for anything to visually look different then you can update the local state silently. And that's what those new options are. It's kind of a big change. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but it does offer, I think, some really cool, uh, much more control, basically. And that's what Flutterflow is continually moving towards, giving you more control over a no-code solution, which is why I would call it a low-code solution. And I'm going to stop my rant there. How was yeah. my explanation? <laughs> Great, actually, uh, because there are a lot of people asking about if they go to a page and, like you said, they pop out or navigate back uh, to the page that they come for, they came from, uh, and the data is not changed there, so this is a great option to use rebuild all pages. So if you use rebuild, like you said, if you use re all rebuild all pages, this is something new. This was not in for the flow before, no. so this is the option that you need to uh, use. It will also help, I think, with bottom sheets. If you've done, like, for instance, let's say you have, a, you know, choose address, and that bottom sheet comes up, the user selects their address, and now, obviously, you want to dismiss the bottom sheet, and you want to have that value that they selected be on the previous page, you would do a rebuild all pages, I think. Yeah, I can show <laughs> you. We, we all know how the local state works, but the last name is coming from the local state, and if I click Update, name it is constantly updating name to some random name nice yeah so this is uh with the default option yeah that's the default option if you do it with silently it won't yeah no build yeah no rebuild oh i thought it was called silent no okay yeah, no rebuild. um and so yeah this also by the way uh, if you go into your code editor this is the last thing yeah. in the last one minute sure uh, this option, if you do, previously there used to be a, a way you could access in like custom actions and stuff, you could access local state or custom widgets using a line of code called ff.appState, parentheses. But that uh, is the custom functions, we have to say that. I, yeah, or, I think it's only in the, actually. Actually, you can, you a, can. You can do it, you can do it in the custom function. Because we have FF, reports. So it was ff app state. Uh, and then with the, the brackets, the parentheses, these signify that this is actually a function, by the way. Uh, and then what you're going to do is dot. Uh, and then you would do dot, and you would be able to type in the name of the local state variable that you wanted to update inside of your function or action. Yeah. Um, well, the problem is that I, I don't think, think you can do it a function, right? Yeah, because I think if you can do it, you should get out to no you, this is not true they broke autocomplete i was out this is what i was complaining okay. about in the slack channel they took away my autocomplete i okay. program via autocomplete i don't know anything all i do is do type stuff in i put dot and then i see what options i have available yeah. <laughs> and they okay, took so away all of that let's try that if we go over here probably if, if yeah you're right we have we have some autocomplete. Auto yeah, you have different ones now. You have basically what it is is you don't have like the core Dart library. So yes. the ones that I need for the basic stuff like date time and things like that, you just don't. If you type date time, for instance, uh, uh, can I type time, this over here? I don't think so. Is it in the function? Yeah, you can use date time in a function. Okay. Date so date time. time comes from what's called the Dart core library, and if you That's type now. dot. 
Exactly. That's the correct syntax. But if you don't know that, yeah. it used to give you helpful suggestions. It no longer does. Okay. What I would recommend to people who are missing this, like me, is go to dartpad.dev, and there you can have some of those options back again. Uh, but that's you're talking about, thing. right? What? This is what you were talking about. Yeah, in the Slack, you mean? No, no, oh, I mean, this, yeah, this yeah, yeah. So this is the, they now have this new bit. new formulation for this. And then they also give you examples of how to do it the other way as well, like the, the with set state. Like you should have a pop-up. I have a pop-up that's like tells you how to do it. Yeah, I already wrote it and dismiss it because oh you okay, I didn't it, dismiss it because I was like, yeah. if I dismiss this, I'm never gonna find it again. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you dismiss it, uh, if you don't dismiss it, actually, it will give you. Uh, for some reason, they made it so you get errors and you cannot oh, really? run your project. Yes, exactly. Oh, so you have okay. to dismiss. So, it's, it's some if you want to run your project and test it, you have to dismiss it, okay. or else you're not able to All run right. your project. Well, we have reached time, so. Um, I hope that was the super base, our Christmas super base episode is what I will be renaming this on YouTube <laughs> because we did not cover the, all of the updates. There is so much stuff going on with Flutterflow. It is genuinely hard to keep track, which is why we are going to be doing a second live stream on Dimitar's channel rather than on your Flexpress channel. Dimitar, promote your channel. Yeah, so my channel, it's uh, with a convenient name of uh, YouTube and then at uh, Flutterflow Expert. Oh, you changed it. Very nice. It was, yeah, it was available. So hello, I'm here. And um, if you just write youtube.com uh, at for the flow expert. I'm there. So every Monday, we will be both on that channel live streaming. Yeah, We're gonna starting from New Year. Mm -hmm. And the New Year is on the 2nd of uh, January. So next Monday, we should be live there. And the last thing, again, share your Flutterflow wrap if you want a chance to win an hour's free time and help with myself or one of our other experts if you don't like us if you don't like me um and you can do that just by sharing your flutterflow rap statistics in our twitter just look for at flexpress dev on twitter and you will find it you can also find us on social media on youtube which is where you've already found us because you're watching this video so hit the like subscribe blah 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 all that good stuff and uh we'll see you next week thanks for joining bye bye take care I feel like we're becoming professional streamers. <laughs> I feel not like, but okay. I mean, we're still struggling with a super base, but I think this is normal. It's but I mean, both. in general, like about uh, promoting yeah. ourselves. <laughs>